Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome back today to another Obsidian video. Today we're going to be looking at some shiny new things and these things have come to us through the Insider build. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, um, obviously Obsidian is free to use but there is a few ways that the company obviously make money for themselves. One of them is by selling Obsidian licenses. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, you can come over here to obsidian.md forward slash pricing and you can come down here and have a look at the early access. Um, and this is basically the Obsidian Insider Access. So it's $25 USD. And what that does is get you access to uh, early access to beta versions. All right, and just to show you what that looks like, it gets you access to a special channel inside of the Discord called Insider Desktop and Insider Mobile Releases. And as you can see here, they give us access and insights to uh, early downloads of the, uh, the changes that are coming, I guess you can say. Now, the change that we have coming today is a little bit exciting. Um, it's called Properties. Um, and basically, it's a new core plugin for Obsidian that's going to basically come in on top of your front matter. And instead of you having to edit with text and review it in text, it's going to replace it with a UI. All right, now it's quite nice. So let's just jump in and have a look. Okay, so here we go. We're in Obsidian. Let's have a look at the new properties functionality that has been provided. We can see up here at the top of the note, we now have the properties icon to indicate there are properties on this note. And if we go over to the left here, you can see that there's a little drop down arrow. If we click that arrow, you can see it expands out and you can see we now have a UI that sits over our front matter. Now, just so you guys are aware of what this is doing, if I click edit, the text is still there. Okay, we still have the original text-based front matter. So all this is effectively doing is providing a, a UI that sits on top of it. All right, it's gonna make it easier for us to obviously add front matter to our notes. It's gonna make it easier for you to keep control of that front matter as well. If you're coming from a tool, uh, maybe like Notion, all right, this might, might increase your comfort level with this because it's going to make it a bit easier to understand. So what is it? How does it work? All right, we can see here that we've got some existing front matter. And if I click on the icon, you can see I can change the property type. So these are now predefined property types that are obviously associated with the front matter. So you can see I've got text, which just a string, a list, a number, a checkbox, a date, and a time. And these are all the options that exist. And here's an existing uh, list, I guess you could say. So you can see multiple options for one front matter value. Uh, this is obviously text. This one here is a tag. We can see these are numbers. All right. And if we come down here, test, we'll change this one to a checkbox. Did that work? Oh, test check. Let's do that. Oh, I think I broke it. Always the way when you're showing a video. Or maybe it's just not updating. No. Test date. Can we change that? No. Can we change it now? No. Maybe I broke it. <laughs> it's always the way. Look, and that is obviously, that's the point of the Insider build, all right? To be honest, um, maybe I'm doing something silly here. I don't know. Um, or maybe it is a case that I've actually found a bit of a bug here. Um, but that is the risk with Insider builds, right? Uh, that's the entire point. I'm not able to actually change anything here. That's the entire point, though, of actually getting in and trying an Insider build, is sometimes you get access to things that are not ready to be used yet. Um, but anyway, I think you get the idea, right? Is you're going to be able to set the property type and then what that's going to happen is that's going to restrict the values that you put inside of that um, property, right? It's going to say you can't put text into a date field, for example, which will make it easier to keep control of things. Now, something you can also do, which I think is very cool, is if you come here um, to this one's a text drop down, you can see that previously used options are now sort of auto presented to you. Now, I already had this functionality. All right, so if I come in here to uh, community plugins and come down here to various complements and turn that off, and we come in here to Paladin and we delete that, 
we can see that that functionality is now coming from this new plugin. All right, because I previously used the um, the various complements plugin to provide that. And if I come in here to just normal notes and start typing, like nothing happens, right? And this is the default that people have. But if I come in here and turn on the various complements plugin, I'm just reload the note. All right, we're here, we'll go into edit mode and we'll come into class. All right, do this class. All right, you can see here that the various complement plugin is already adding that drop down option for me because it's adding that history that I've seen in the note before. So I already had that functionality. And so, you know, while this is, it's definitely easier to look at and it's easier to read it's not necessarily adding anything that's too new for me just yet. Now, I have heard though that this is kind of like the foundation and there's things to come, all right? So there's some exciting things that might enable like plugin developers, for example, to have predefined sets of front matter that comes with their plugin that has all the options already pre-selected for you and available. It's gonna really sort of um, strengthen and mature the front matter and make it so it can go to the next level. Hopefully they add some better picture support because I know that's something that a lot of us always struggle with is how do we use images inside of things like data view queries and stuff trying to pull from the front matter and it never works and it's got to be a, a URL not a local image and all that sort of stuff like it'd be cool if they could fix that. Um, but anyway, you can obviously maximize and minimize that. You can see it there. It is just a UI so it's sitting on top of your existing notes. So cool functionality. I think it's gonna be very popular, all right? There's gonna be users that absolutely prefer this to the old edit version. I, for one, am incredibly happy that they've left the text. Um, text enables me to do cool things, like if I want to update the note icon or add the note icon or remove the note, like I can do that with regex, um, which is a bit more advanced than most people are used to. Now, there are some problems with this. Um, I think there's a certain type of front matter that's not quite available yet. All right, so I think there's some notable issues. So, um, I think it's a certain type of text isn't currently supported. All right, they're depreciating some keys. So there's going to be there's there's going to be some hurdles with this guys like this could be a pretty big change for the tool um, just be prepared and I guess like that's where I wanted this video to go next okay because I've turned on this functionality and I've started playing with it um, but the one thing that I found is that it's created a problem for me all right so let's jump in and show you what that problem is. Okay, so here we go. This is one of my previously made notes. Um, and as you can see, I'm using the Banners plugin. All right, now the Banners plugin is obviously fantastic because it lets you add a banner to the top of your notes, adds this lovely functionality where you can drag it around and it will sort of remain um, where you drag it. And obviously, you know, it's quite nice. But watch where my mouse is, all right? You can see that I'm actually clicking here and you can see that the new properties is actually hiding underneath the banner. All right, now the banner plugin is obviously having issues. So if we come in here to community plugins and we go browse and we have a look for the banner plugin, we can see it's installed. But what I'm looking for here is the last update. And this one's saying it's been updated a year ago. Okay, that's pretty concerning. Okay, because Something I'm always worried about is plugin health, right? Are they being maintained? Is the developer active? Are there issues being fixed? And if we come in here and we click the GitHub icon, we can come in here and see obviously the last release it was April 21st, 2022. So it's well over a year now. There's 62 issues that are open, all right? If we come in here and actually have a look at the developer on Notepad's activity here, we can see the last activity is right back in April, 2022. All right, so that tells me that this plugin, as of this point in time, is not in a healthy state. Okay, sorry, I, that's, that's exactly what it is. We've got 62 open issues, that is problematic. Now, I've personally been having issues with this plugin for a while. 
All right, and I'll see if I can find something that actually replicates what I'm talking about. Sometimes I go through and fix these. Basically though, I'm using GitHub to sync my vault. I might have actually fixed all of these. And what I find though, and there's an open issue for this, is that sometimes the banners will duplicate themselves. And I can't actually find a working example here. I think I have fixed them all. But what I find is that basically, something like this will sometimes after I sync with GitHub, end up looking something like this. All right, and it will create a second copy of the front matter, all right, which means you end up with this really ugly sort of line here. Now, that's problematic, and what I have to do is every time I see it in a note, I just delete it, all right, and I get rid of it, and I put the front matter back in, but it's a painful experience, all right? There's been an issue raised on the GitHub forever um, and no one's ever really figured out what it was or what's doing it, um, but there's certainly no development happening. So, you know, I've been trying to find an alternative to this for a while. All right, so um, that's where we're at. Um, you know, it's questions in my mind going, well, should I continue the use of the banner plugin or should I throw it away altogether? Now, obviously you guys know I use the ITS theme um, and if you come along over to the Discord, you can see obviously Survey Beads always talking and um, in interacting with the community and letting us know what's going on with the ITS theme. It's a fantastic theme. Um, but there's something being uh, posted this morning that said, oh, hey, I've actually already got a fix for this. Survey Beads all, all over it, on top of it. So I'll share that with you now. And obviously I'll share this by the Obsidian TTRPG tutorials um, website once this video is up. But these two little lines of code here are fantastic. Now you can save this into a file. You can call it whatever you want. Just call it something.css. All right, and what you wanna do is you want to take that to your, um, your vault. All right, so this is my vault. And you can see I've got a .obsidian sort of um, folder. You want to put it in there, put it into snippets, all right? And then once it's in there as a snippet, what you can actually do is come in here to appearance and you can uh, come down here and you can turn this on. Now, just note that there is a open snippets button from Obsidian, so that's probably a bit easier than just doing what I showed you. But you can see I've got banner fix here. If I click enable on that, all right, we can see that this issue is now, well, actually it's a bit hard to see on this. Let's come back to this note, which I can't do. Let me create some front matter. There we go. All right, so we can see now that we've actually got some front matter um, and you can see that the change I made, that file that I enabled has moved to the new properties banner up to the top. It means it comes in above the actual banner uh, which means technically you know it starts here, but obviously you can come up here and click this button to sort of move that back up. Now, I'm personally still not a real big fan of this if I'm completely honest. Like I feel like this properties button, like it belongs somewhere. I just don't like it being here, right? Between the top of my file, my banner and my content, it feels like it's taking up too much screen real space, uh, real estate especially when you consider that I do most of my editing in edit mode. So there is questions in my mind about, do I even like this new functionality? Do I need it? Because it is cool, right? It's definitely cool. But as you can see in here, like I reckon if I did that, I got rid of this. No, it's not working. Anyway, I've got the various compliments plugin and sometimes that will actually trigger a drop down menu that says, this is, um, oh, what if I do wrong? This, here we go. So this is the, the drop down, right? So this is the various compliments plugin kicking in and saying, hey, I've seen you use this before. Here's a drop down selection. Um, and it's quite handy to have, obviously. You know, so I'm getting that functionality from there that this is kind of providing in that it's dropping down and making it easier. But I guess at the same time, it is also making it so there's a lot of other cool stuff you can do here. And my understanding is it's adding a control wrapper on top of this and there's some things to come that could be pretty cool. 
Um, some of the things I've been teased at is like the TTRPG stat block plugin, for example, could actually, as a plugin, define the front matter that it requires and uses and make it easier for us to obviously utilize that plugin moving forward because it will have like a pre-structured layout that, it, you know, all of the different sort of layouts that that plugin uses should rely on. So, you know, that could be quite exciting. So I guess it's kind of like a watch this space for now um, and see how it goes. I'm leaving it on for now, um, but I'm not necessarily using it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I just don't need it. I think is where I'm at. Anyway, that's sort of like part two of this. What I want to do though, is show you an alternative to the Banners plugin. So let's jump into that. All right, so alternative to the Banners plugin. Let's pretend that we don't like Banners plugin anymore and we want to turn it off. Let's go down to settings. Let's go to community plugins and let's turn that bad boy off. All right, plugins are now gone. Okay, you can see it still leaves the front matter there. So technically I still have compatibility. If I turn the plugin back on, my notes still have everything I need, but I still want banners, okay? And ideally, I'd love to have a banner that works on Obsidian Publish because obviously I've been making a new fancy website, obsidiantttrpgtutorials.com, that has all my tutorials and wouldn't it be cool if I could add a banner to those websites when I publish them? Because right now the banners plug plugin is not compatible, all right? Obviously it's broken, so we just showed you that there's a fix that you can apply yourself, but it doesn't look like there's gonna be an official fix coming anytime soon. So maybe it's time for us to leave the banners plugin behind and use something else with published support. That'd be lovely. So what do we do? All right, well, obviously I'm a big user of the ITS theme. You guys know that by now. So if we come up here to settings and go appearance and go into themes and manage, all right, I'm gonna go show installed only and I have the ITS theme already enabled. All right, you can see it's created by SlurvyB um, and basically, you know, it's ready to rock and roll. Now I've got it installed, I've got it turned on, all that sort of loveliness. Now, the good thing about this website, uh, this theme, sorry, is that if you don't like this theme, um, keeping in mind there's lots of alternative versions of this theme, guys, it's amazing. But if you don't like this theme, you don't have to use it, okay? You can use components of it and um, SlowVB puts out all of the CSS for this as well. So what I'm gonna do though, is gonna go to the ITS theme documentation we're gonna click on that, come through to here. All right, um, you can see that there's all sorts of links here going. Um, and if we come down and have a look, what I'm looking for is the image adjustments. All right, come through to image adjustments and you can see download image adjustments snippet. All right, so just like I showed you before with how to create this, all right, you can download this snippet, the CSS, and you can put it into your Obsidian Snippets folder and turn that snippet on, and that will give you all of the functionality that comes with this snippet, right? So everything that's listed on this page will be possible in your vault without the theme. So just a heads up on that. All right, now, if we come down and we start having a look at this thing, what have we got? We've got all sorts of different things going on. Now, you can see here there's the positioning and anyone who's watching my videos will know I use that a lot. If we come down a bit further, there's image adjustments and positioning sort of changes. All right, so you can come through and add some of these components to the end of your image and it will change things. But what I'm looking for is the banner support. And here we go. So we've got the banners. All right, and you can see different sort of banners here. And there's examples over on the right here. So what I'm looking for is the image um, pipe banner. All right, so let's jump into Obsidian and see what that looks like. Keeping in mind that I've already got the ITS theme installed, so the CSS is already enabled. I'm gonna go edit. Here's my image that I, I want to use, okay. I'm gonna do an explanation mark because I wanna show this image in my note. Square bracket, square bracket. I'm gonna paste my image name. All right, let's just have a look and see what that does. All right, puts the image up the top of the note, which is fine, like that's that's desirable functionality already. All right, but then we can come in here, we could do a pipe and type banner. What does that look like? All right, now that is basically turned that image into a banner. Now, as you can see, it's kind of like cut to the middle of the image. 
all right? So by default, it's just hitting there. All it's doing is it's taking that image and it's just showing this section. But if we go back to the image adjustments website and we come back up to some of these, and I think it's this one here. All right, so inner image positions, and you can see there's the option here to sort of turn the way these things are working and change them. So you can move images left, right, up, down. Uh, you can see obviously the center one. And if we go here where this is one, two, three, four, five, this is one, two, three, four, five, you can see what's required over here on the right to sort of make this adjustment. Now, I kind of want to see a bit higher up my image, I think. All right, so I want to sort of like move it down a little bit. So I'm going to have a look at that one. All right, you can see P plus CT um, with the tiny, I'm just going to write this down, P plus CT with tiny plus H tiny. I don't think I need all of that. I think I actually just need the P plus CT. All right, but we're going to try it. Let's go over to Obsidian. We're going to come in here. And what we're going to do is after this banner, we're just going to put a space and we're going to type some new options. What does that look like? Made it absolutely tiny. Yeah, that's what the horizontal and the width tiny do. So we don't need those. Let's try the P plus CT. All right, you can see it's moved that image down. I can see the bit of the dragon now. Um, I might want to go a little bit lower. Let's go P plus CL maybe. No, I think I went the wrong way. Went the wrong way. Now, once you've got a fair idea of which ones you probably want here, you probably get this pretty quickly. Uh, Let's go TC, P plus TC. There we go, look at that. All right, so that's quite easy. That is just an image at the top of the note that obviously makes that very, very easy to use. Let's just have a quick look at the Obsidian Publish. Uh, keeping in mind that I've obviously got this set up so that this will work, I've got the CSS applied. Um, we're just going to grab this new note. Now, what is this? Chapter 15. Oh, where did I put it? In here. No, I don't have these published. It's kind of showing up there, but I need it up there. I'm going to do this as a test instead. Let's just do this. Got a banner test note. I don't want to be publishing an official book out of a D&D 5th edition module, to be honest. This is text. All right, so now we've got the banner test. We're going to just try publish this and see what it looks like. Let publish catch up and do its thing. I really love publish, by the way. It's uh, been a fantastic addition. There's banner test. We're going to publish that. Done. Click on that. Let it load. Don't think that's actually going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work is because I didn't press the button to publish the uh, linked items. And in this case here, the, the image isn't actually part of the note that I just published. So I need to add the linked stuff. Uh, all right, it's in the party, banner test, add linked, here we go. Now I just deleted it, need to do it again. I'm, I'm doing a great tutorial today, guys. This is fantastic. Let's try that again. All right, so new, the party, a banner test, add linked, it's already there. There we go. Now let's have a look at that. And if we come over here to the party, here's the banner test. And there we go, nice banner. And you can see that's already sort of followed their ruling. So 
That's because the CSS is actually saved inside of my vault um, as something that can be enabled on the CSS. So that, that works quite well on my Obsidian Publish server, sorry. All right, so that gives me obviously better support for banners in my opinion, right? So it's very clearly quite compatible with properties. Um, there's no issues here with me publishing to GitHub and syncing it and then coming back and finding two of the same link. So that's fantastic. Um, looks like I'm getting some issues with my data view query, but that's neither here nor there. That's a complete different issue. And if we just go through, we'll just replicate that very quickly just to do it again for the sake of doing it again. It's just an image. We're going to go banner and we're going to go P plus CC, I think it was. No, I got that wrong. Oh no, there we go. That's nice. Is that the one I did? P plus TC. P plus TC. Now, to make this easier, actually, I liked that one more. There we go. To make this easier for you to do, right, don't forget that you can always just do something like copy that line of text, come down to your templates folder, and if you don't have a templates folder, you should, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should go watch my video on templates. But here, we're gonna say, insert banner, we're going to call it ITS. And then what I might do, like, I probably have a few options here if I'm honest. All right, see how I've got two options there? And then what I would do is obviously when I use this banner, I'll actually, I'll just show you an example of how I would use this. All right, I'll come along to my note. I want to put a banner in. I'm going to come here. I'm going to press Alt T to bring up my templates. And I'm going to go insert banner. Here's my option. All right, I now get a couple of options. I can go, oh, that's pretty much the one that I want. But probably what I would do if I was doing this is go through and go uh, pick a different picture. All right, and then I'd copy this into here. This one I would obviously be gone. All right, now I get some different options and I'd go, all right, I like the top one, so I'll delete the bottom one. All right, it's quick, it's easy. I might have five or six different options on there, to be honest, in that template. So I go insert, I go, yep, there's the one that I like once I've pasted my image in, and then I just delete the ones I don't like, and off I go, keep doing my notes. So that can be a quick way to sort of do it. All right, let's just reverse that out because, you know, this is actually a note that I use. There we go, beautiful. All right, so there you go, guys. That is a pretty quick look at the new sort of properties um, uh, concept, um, the impact it's having on the banners plugin um, and uh, a way to fix the banners plugin if you still want to use that or an alternative using the ITS theme if you'd like replacement banners functionality in order to get over this hurdle and get back on with your creating your notes. Now, which one am I gonna use? I'm gonna use the ITS theme banners. I feel like it's a much stronger option. It's got published functionality and you know I, I'm not reliant on a developer to come along and update their plugin in case of this breaking. It's just basic functionality. Um, well, I, I am reliant on the ITS theme, I guess, but you know, SlurVB is like completely reliable, uh, active in our community like 70 times a day. Like I got no concerns there. All right, so there we go, guys. That has been another Obsidian video. I hope you have found this enjoyable. Um, if you obviously you, you are brand new to Obsidian and you're just coming along and checking this out, uh, do come along here to obsidianttrpgtutorials.com um, and you can see here that we've got basic places for you to get started with learning this tool. I recommend you jump into getting started. You complete all of the content on this page before you dive deeper into the rabbit hole, which is plugin tutorials. And there's a lot more in here, but it's all components, right? You can pick what you wanna learn. You can choose what you wanna to add to your notes. You are in control of this um, learning curve, right? 
Obsidian on the surface is very simple, but it can get very challenging. Outside of that, I want to say a huge and massive thanks to my Patreon members. You guys are amazing. You're obviously supporting me with, uh, you know, just saying thanks and saying, hey, you can keep making content. So thank you guys. You're keeping me on point. Um, and a shout out to obviously a huge Discord community, the Obsidian TTRPG community. All right, if you want to find out how to get into here, head on over to Obsidian TTRPG Tutorials.com, come into community and support. You can find links to my Patreon here if you do want to buy me a coffee, or you can just jump in here to the Obsidian TTRPG community Discord. That will come over here to our community, and then from here, there is just all sorts of stuff. Now, I do highly recommend jumping into the Obsidian support section, all right, because what you can do in here is come in here and say, hey, I'm having an issue with the ITS theme. And it will actually show you all the previous questions that people have asked about the ITS theme, allowing you to see what the outcome was, hopefully how to solve your issue. All right, so fingers crossed that it will help. Um, there we go. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're enjoying your use of Obsidian. Uh, thank you for being part of this amazing community and I will speak to you on the socials. Have a good day.